fishing, it's fine, but hooking is the only way. We're going to show you how to catch some fish today. So today I'm going to install a HDS 12 Pro, which is a new unit coming out, and the Active Target 2, which is your live target. So the new HDS Pro, it has a faster processor in it, so you could actually split the screen on the Active Target. You could run multiple transducers on the live. Um, it's just a lot faster processor in this unit here. So it gives you a different display it's a lot quicker when you turn it on it fires right up compared to the live which it doesn't so you could take this one pro so like i have three lives in mine 12 so i could get one pro and then hook it through to ethernet and they'll all operate through this faster processor so i could utilize and get a better picture but the main thing on this one is that a lot of guys are running two of these transducers so they could look simultaneously and also you could split the screen and look at forward and down or scout or whatever you want which you can't do it on the lives only one screen on the lives and multiple screens on the new pro and it has a higher frequency active target um, is not like any other sonar it actually shows you real time so you actually see your lure, you could actually see the fish come up and eat it. So I'm running the one and the, and what I want to do is get this on the water because I want to see if I can see my lure when it's on the bottom or the fish that sit on the bottom. Because with the live target one, once it gets a foot to the bottom, it disappears. So this is supposed to be a lot clearer. So can't wait to get this installed and try it. <laughs> Basic first, we're just going to pull some wire so I know what, you know, we're going to do where I'm going to locate the box. But I think one of the things, hooking up that live target too. So when you take out your, your HDS and everything, they tell you that there's a yellow wire so you could trigger the power to that live target. I don't do it that way. I run a separate breaker so I could turn on and off because I don't use it all the time. And if you put it on that yellow wire, every time you turn the fish finder on, it comes on. So it'll drain your battery. I've had, you know, I drained mine twice um, because of that box. They require an eight gauge wire to power. So you know it has some draw. So I put a circuit breaker and run them separate. So here we are, we're gonna pull the wire to wire up these units. I mean, we're just, this is probably the easiest part, is hook a wire to a pull cable and pull it through. So here we go. You have to decide where you want to plant the black box for the live target. And then you pull all the wires and get them all pulled through before we do some hooking. So basically that black box, um, like I said before, I like to put it on a breaker so I could turn it off. So if you use a live switch that comes on the 12s so that when you turn the 12, everything fires. I don't like that because there's sometimes that I don't use my live target because I'm in too shallow water or I don't have any need for it. So if you put it on that yellow wire, every time you turn your fish finder on, it powers. So I'd rather put it on a circuit, a separate breaker so I could turn it on or off. It's very simple. So I just run the cables through now. So basically up from the front to the black box, you're going to have power going to the black box. You're going to have the transducer from the trolling motor to the black box and an ethernet cable. So let's get started. One of the issues you're going to have when you're installing this is this transducer has to go to the black box. See how big that plug is? So trying to get this through um, from one, from the transducer to that black box, it's kind of hard. So you want to, before you do any installing, you should lay everything out and then before you screw anything down because you're going to have to make different modifications. 
because I was going to put the black box by the battery compartment and I can't now because this will no can't go through all the way to the back so we're going to mount it up front and then I got to change everything so lay everything out before you start to install and make sure that it clears and this is a big issue because that's a big plug I had to figure out a way to get this plug back to the battery and um, everything has to go to this black box. This is the brain to the system. So I was going to put it back here in the battery compartment, but there's no way I could get this plug to the back. This boat is all foam insulated. It's impossible. So the only option is to move the box. So I moved it up here. Don't where I lay everything out before you decide to drill because you got to make sure these plug-ins will go through. So I'm going to just drill a hole through the side and then we'll get this done. Oh, beautiful. No foam. So when you open the package up, you're going to have a fuse holder like this. There's no fuse in it. The fuse comes separate. So you're going to see this little brown thing. That's a 5 amp fuse. You have to open it and put it in. I don't know why they just don't put them in there for you, but they leave them out. So you want to make sure that has a fuse in it. Did it come with a fuse? Yeah. So see these four wires? This is the power plug to the black box. If you wanted the HDS unit to turn it on, then you're going to put yellow to yellow off the unit. But we're not going to use it. We're not going to use that. We're not going to use the blue wire because we're going to run a separate breaker for it. So I'm going to cut these off. So then we're going to take and connect these. Good. Good. So I'm going to splice the wire together. So when they tell you to use eight wire, eight gauge to power, look how bad it is compared to the one that goes into the unit. Kind of don't make sense. So when I use connector, I'm going to just strip this one on the little one and fold it over so it's bad or otherwise it won't crimp. So when I stick it in like that, it'll crimp. Yeah, that one fits perfect. Look at that one. And when you fold it over as well? No, I can't because it's too big. That's, that's an eight. This is an eight gauge connector. No, I mean the block when you fold it over? Yeah, on the little wire. So that's power right here. It's power to the box. So I like to hook all these up while the box is not mounted so I know that my connectors went in properly.
So if you mount the box, it's just harder to to see it this way here. I know the connections are good. So especially this connector here, because there's so many pins, you got to make sure you don't bend them. It locks in. And here we're done with this. So now I'm just find somewhere to set this. These black boxes, you're supposed to put it in a compartment where it could breathe, so it has to have a little air. On here, there's three lights. So I would mount it to where you could see these lights blinking. So mounting it somewhere like in this compartment here where I could actually see it. So if uh, my, usually on your screen on your unit, your HDS, it'll say no source. You open here and the lights aren't blinking, then you know you got a power issue. So put it where you could see it. So again, on the black box, the yellow wire has to be powered. So twist the yellow and the red together and it'll turn on. What I'm doing, I put this box so, so it could breathe. So I just, just make sure that the wires aren't crimped or anything. Can you store other things in there with it? Oh yeah. So on the side of the black box, there's a little screw that goes in the side. That's for ground. Very important. If you don't put it on, you're going to have a lot of interference. Where do you ground it to? Anywhere. So this aluminum bolt, you can ground to anything. Any screw. You can so since this bolt is aluminum, the whole thing is grounded. So we just ground it right to there. What if you had a fiberglass bolt? Then you have to go find a ground. When you're installing your new electronics on your uh, boat and you have, uh, say you have a Lorance electronics like we're doing here with this HDS Pro and you have a different brand of trolling motor like the Ultrex like we're installing it on and the transducers that are in the Ultrexes are actually made to match up with Hummingbird. Lorance um, and Garmin, they both made their own trolling motors basically because of the transducers that it takes to run their units. So they're getting so um, specified, you can't use one um, transducer to work for all units like you could in the past. So as we're installing the HDS Pro on this boat here with the um, Ultrex, I chose to strap an HDI transducer which I purchased separately, and that'll give me the regular 2D sonar and down scan. The side scan is in the back of the boat, so we could actually utilize side scanning in the back. But in the front, we're going to be using the um, transducer that I'm strapping the troll motor. So other ones, like if you got a Lorance like here on my boat here, and I have a ghost trolling motor, it actually has the HDI transducer built in here. Or you could have the opt to put a 3-in-1, uh, which actually has side imaging too. So there's a lot of options now that, you know, you have to be careful when you start buying this stuff to make sure everything matches. What you doing? It's trapping the transducer for the throwing motor onto the unit. Where do you know where to put the transducer? Where do you put the transducer? On the bottom of the trolling motor. Where exactly? <laughs> huh? Where exactly? I mean, I like to try to keep it centered. So I'm going to put it just like this. So these are just crimps that I'm crimping the wires together. I usually use crimps instead of taping it. So just give it a good squeeze. <laughs> 
So these are actually heat shrink ones, but I don't do it. You can if you want. Um, you just heat it up with a lighter and close it, but it'll be fine. So here to here, and then this is going to go to the 8-gauge wire uh, that we're going to power. Remember, these things are, if you're running any length of cable to power, you want to make sure you use 8-gauge. Let's see. Now I'm trying to see which way it, when you stow it. Which is this the target point? What's yeah. the what, what's the target point? Yeah, where it's, where that oh in line with the head. Yeah. So when you stall, when you stall at the prop like inside, yeah. So be like that. What are all those marks? I mean, reset it. So like if you wanted to scout, you go like that, and then like that. And see, it's scouting. And then when you want it down, put it like that. Do you point yours a little forward? I do mine, yeah. Like this. No, about like that. And then I use it down and forward like that. So you don't change it? Yeah. Um, for a tiny, make sure it's those. Okay. I put it down here. I need to put it about. So when I'm installing this transducer, the live target. You want to make sure you put these rubber pads in there, otherwise it's going to spin on you. So they just fit in here. There's a couple of little keys on the top and the bottom so it won't twist. You'll feel it pop in there. So it'll fit just like that. And there's two little clips that go in there. And then you make sure you, it's on the shaft. How do you know where to put it on the shaft? Um, I like to keep them low. You just want to make sure it clears the mounting, the lock right here. This fork here, you want to make sure it clears. You want to try to get this as level as you can. Level with the prop. It's gonna. This is going to be the perpendicular with this. So they should be pretty much straight. Okay. Parallel. Yeah. And because we have those rubber grommets in there, just give it a good snug. Don't tighten it real tight. You'll break it. So you just give it a good wiggle and it's pretty firm. So you got that. Got the regular deucer and then we're going to route these cables. And you use just it cable ties? Yep, this is it ties to hold the cables. And then right here, you want to make sure you leave a bowl so it bends. 
because you're going to need that cable when you extend the prop, when you extend them. Oh, when you turn. That's why, like on Tarova motors, it doesn't work too good because the shaft slides up and down. You can't even put this on there. I have longer ones. Mm -hmm. Is that good? Can I make it? Yeah. So this one, you want to leave a little flack in there just because you might turn that transducer. So I'll leave it like this, just a little. You don't want it too long because then it'll get stuck on here. So... We're using a lot of plastic ties because I like to make it so the wires are not loose flopping around because you know, these motors are so heavy when you deploy them, it'll rip them right off. So you want to make sure you either black tape them or use zip ties. So instead of using those yellow wires, so it fires, I'm going to put a 30 amp waterproof breaker so that you just trip it like that and then you reset it you turn it back on you just pop it so when you're done for the day or i'm out fishing and i'm not using my live i turn it off so it doesn't drain the battery here again if you hook that yellow wire so you turn your fish finder on the live comes on you're powering that box um, if i don't use it a lot of fishing trips i don't even turn it on so i just pop the breaker and it's off i don't have to worry about my battery wearing down so i think this is the way to do it so I put these terminal ends on there so you won't have any trouble down the road. So I'm just putting these terminals on here. So whenever you guys are using, uh, working with heavy wire like 8 gauge, 10 gauge or, or batter, I recommend using ter these terminals because this wire is hard to put together and tape black tape and stuff you'll have issues down the road because it'll corrode best to use terminators You squeeze these, squeeze them as hard as you can. Mm -hmm. They're tight. Now you're installing the repeatable circuit breaker. Yeah, so we put the breaker on here so I could turn the thing on and off. And when I'm fishing and not using my live, I leave it off. Otherwise, it's going to kill your battery. Lead acid and lithium batteries? Yep. You could use any kind of battery you want, as long as you get 12 volts. So now we're all done, transducer is done, black box is mounted. All I have to do is hook it to power. So here we go. This motor is a 24 volt trolling motor. So we got two batteries here for the trolling motor. So what I like to do is take the power to the black box for the live tube and take it off so even though i have these batteries in series with the jumper here to here to make 24 volts you still take 12 volts so i put a breaker on and off breaker for the live and then um i put the fish finder over here on this side so i got the fish finder here up front and then the live here and we're ready to go do you always break the fish finder and the live up into two separate batteries uh, no, you don't have to.
What are you doing now? Cooking the fish finder. So we're going to power the fish finder. Here again, make sure you take the fuse and put it in the holder. So on the HDS um, Pro, this set of wires with the blue, green, and orange, those are NEMA cables. So we're not going to be using it, so I would just cut them off. And then this is your power cord. So just crimping these together. So what I did was on these is um, I'm going to, he has a 24 volt trolling motor. So this motor is 24 volts. So you have two of your trolling motor batteries and they're put in series. So basically you put them in series to get 24 volts. You can still tap off of each one for 12 volts. So that's what I'm doing because I don't want to run all these powers. This um, live target I run 100 amp hour lithium, 12 volts in mine, and I left it on overnight. It's sitting in my garage, and then when I took it fishing in the morning, it was dead. So that box will drain 100 amp hour lithium in one day. So that's why I put the switch on there so I could turn it off. So basically on here, we got just power. We're going to just shove all these cables back down underneath there, and we're almost ready to fire this puppy up. So do you recommend turning it off um, when you... When you're not finished finishing, yes, yeah, always try to make it a habit to turn it off. Because sometimes, you know, I forget when I go home, I charge the batteries up, but it's still on. So usually the day before I go fishing, I'll unplug the charger, and the night till the next morning, that battery will be dead. So it's best to put it on a breaker. So when I'm not using it, because a lot of times I'm not, I don't even turn it on, especially if I'm fishing shallow, and that way there it won't kill my battery. I'm screwing down the the fish finder bracket to hold the HDS-12. So I just screwed it in a plate, make sure you have a big enough hole to pull them big wires through. Technical uh, difficulties? No. It's got a usual head, I guess. More than one way to skin a cat. <laughs> So as long as you know, you know where the fuses are, so the fish finder don't work, just go in that hole. Well, you'd have to cut this, because that won't, that's way too thick. Well, I know, but what I'm thinking is drilling like a 9 16th hole right here. Take a drill bit, put a block of wood, drill through it, and then fish this in there, slough it up there, and then put that there. Okay. Basically, I'm just putting these caps on for the ones we're not using. Let me see. So this port two, that one's for um, side scan. So we're not having any side scan. How can we not have any side scan? Because you don't need it. There, that. So now that we got the units on, so I turned them both on. I make sure all these lights are on, on the black box. See how those lights are on and the ones blinking? Um, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know it's connected. So see how the ethernet's blinking? So it's something wrong. 
So when you first turn these things on, you need to leave this black box powered up. You go to your unit. After you fire them both up, you go to the page button. You go to the startup setup wheel. Scroll up here to restore default. And then make sure the top there checked and hit OK. So what it does is it restarting, reprogramming, and it's supposedly it'll hook up to the black box. So accept, no, yes, active target just enabled, yep. Configure, yes, miles, lakes, regular fishing, finish. And configure now, fresh water. Active 2 is now ready to use. You can adjust the settings anytime. Finished. Exit out. Go to page button. Uh, one of the things on here, like when you first turn these units on, active target doesn't show up on the pages. So you have to hit the setup wheel here. You go up here to advanced and you go to features. And then you scroll up and you find active target and turn it on. And then when it turns it on, it'll recognize it. And then you just exit out. Then you hit the page, hit the target. Voila! Up and running. Okay, you bunch of dummies. Here we go. We're pulling it to water. Oh, you're using your real voice this time. Nice. <laughs> okay, are we ready? Yeah. Fishing is fun, but hooking is the only way. We're gonna show you how to catch some fish today.